USAA 890 out of 1,000 as far as customer satisfaction, so we're including claims, things like that, where Geico has gotten an 871 score, a little bit lower, but to be honest with you, the comparison there is pretty null. It just means that Geico may have had a little bit more claims or might not have taken that extra step where USAA has, so I wouldn't necessarily put that out the door, but when you, call, when you look at the cost of the annual price, the average for USAA as competitive. I would say for those of you that are watching this, you may want to think a little bit more towards Progressive being in that second to third slot because I think that they are also impactful and their reviews are a little bit higher as far as the turnaround on claims, which we're going to dive into in just a moment. So essentially leaning over at my wallet hub, they're saying if you're 18 years old, you're going to pay about 130 a month. 21 years old, you're going to pay about 77 a month for just basic coverage that they do. Their app has gotten decent ratings, so they'll let you pay the bill on the app. They have these uh, deposits that you can do. You can go to local ATMs. They have uh, ID cards that you can get access insurance right on the app as well. And you can report claims on there. Unfortunately, that's the part where they're losing. So great company, great prices in a lot of states. Not all of them. But they are really struggling with their more recent claims that are happening. $100 difference across the board, let's say in the next annual cost of insurance is $1,200 versus $1,300 or vice versa. Personally, I would even pay a little bit more to go with USAA. Their track record is amazing. They are kind of hidden in the insurance world as far as not being high rated because there's always an asterisk with them because they don't allow just anybody in. You have to be part of that military group and because of that, your AM best and your daily power and your uh, websites that are ranking get caught with it. USA doesn't hit you as hard, neither does Geico. They're about 1268 versus 1390, which is Geico. State Farm is 1551. And then Progressive is 2279. I challenge the article that they're talking about this. I don't love Progressive, they're not my favorite company, although they are a powerful company. I think these numbers are a little bit off based on the location. So my guess is this is in a state, probably Texas, that they aren't your hoops to get my settlement, never had this insurance, never will, very upset on how they treat people. Extremely frustrated with the company, point where I'm canceling all services with them, 35 years, was a victim of fraud in November 2020, and now in June of 2021, it's still not removed fraud. So there's a lot of problems where USAA isn't keeping their promise as far as doing the extra steps, which they used to. That's the crazy part. Their rates have been going up a little bit. Their claims service has gone. I've been a customer of USA for about 30 years. In the past, I've found them to be courteous, helpful, and unfortunately, I recently submitted a claim of hail damage to my car, and I've been immensely disappointed by the experience with them this time. These helpful customer service seem to have vanished. Getting the status of the claim has become arduous or deal. Arduous and arduous? Okay, you'll have to let me know what that means. <laughs> I'll just say an ordeal. Uh, trying to reach a live person is uh, pay an extra fee, which most companies charge 3 to $5 every month for that additional piece. Before we dive into the reviews, there's a couple things I wanted to mention. Is You should watch one of my biggest comparisons. I actually did USAA versus Geico. If you want to learn more about that, I'll link the video here. But let's dive into a couple other things that they offer. They do dental insurance. They do farms and ranches, life insurance, major medical insurance, small business, travel, vision. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I'll give my opinion of them here in just a moment, and I'll tell you which one I would go with and give you those options. But let's take a look at what Bankrate says about them. I've got them pulled up here. And they said, overall, the Bankrate score of them is almost identical. The Geico Insurance got 4.6, and the Bankrate score for USAA got 4.7. So pretty well the same. And they're both A++ rated, which is the top that you can get. So the AM Best rating has given them the most. JD Power has given pretty major change. As far as good drivers, a similar scenario where they were about $1,190 a year and Geico was $1,384 for the year. So they are a little bit cheaper in that area. State Farm was $1,403 and then Progressive for some reason was way out of whack at $2,075 based on the $100,000 per person. 
$300,000 per accident and $100,000 for property damage coverage limits. That's assuming that you do comprehensive claim goes the way that you want. Keep in mind, that's not a fit for everybody. Some people have had some problems, uh, gargantuan chore, and the person I finally talked to was rude, argumentative, excuse-ridden. Such a disappointment for the company has been touted as one of the best. And there's a lot of these. They go on because you gotta imagine every three, every five people, you're getting two to three that are staying negative. One's the worst experience I've ever had, and these are the ones that are in order. I'm not sorting these in any specific order. Totally, uh, totally my car didn't offer what it was worth. They made me jump. This was October of 2020. Tree fell on their house. Their rain is pouring in, but they can't get a hold of somebody on the weekend. So either it's a miscommunication on getting the phone number to call, or they're just closed on the weekend. I'd love to know if you guys know that answer and leave that in the description below. Karen in November said, do not trust USAA. Worst customer experience. I've been with this company for a couple years. Uh, continue to see my policy rates going up monthly, which is what I'm also hearing. And when I quote, lowers the risk and lowers the rates that you're gonna pay. Now comparing that to Geico, who was built and founded in 1936, they have 28 million vehicles that they insure across the tons of states that they do. They're probably the larger footprint and average overall have the most open door policy where just about anyone can go in there. Now it's funny because USAA is the government and the military and all of that where Geico, when you look at the name of it, it's Geico Insurance. So it's Government Employee Insurance Company. So if you're on a military base is the biggest key to it and you store it there, they're gonna give you a very large discount for that. Now part of the discount that they say is not really a discount. So a chunk of it, you're gonna see about a 30% decrease in general because when you put a car in storage, you're gonna take that liability portion off. You're not driving it, so you shouldn't be liable for anything. And so that's gonna knock about 30 to 40% off on its own. And then you're gonna, even though, now we're talking about whether Geico's even a fit for you, and now we're looking at more of a progressive or a State Farm or somebody else. That's where I would recommend that you subscribe to the channel so you get more updates on who's going to be the best fit for those scenarios. So clean driving record, you're looking at USAA at about $1,200 versus about $1,400. So it's a little slight difference there. And then when you get a speeding ticket, it is about the same difference where they're okay. Uh, Geico is most people. I would say an average credit score is below 640 or between that 600 to 650 range. And now you're looking at 1277 for USAA, 1505 for Geico. So it kind of flips the cost there where the average credit plays a big factor. We'll skip right into the excellence. So if you have a 700 plus score in insurance, you're going to be looking at about 1030 with USAA, 1312. And that's where it starts to flip. So poor credit is going to be with Geico. In 1922, it has over 13 million members. That's a huge amount, especially since a lot of people don't understand that USAA is only a military company. So if you have to be some part of the government or military or have a family member that's part of that in order to just get in the door. That's one of the ways that they keep the rates low is because they're kind of an organization or a club or a group membership that they weed out some of the people they don't want in the company, which ultimately, that was the name of Geico. And they initially did similar to what USAA did, and they only let people that were part of the government or an employee of it, then they would only let them in. Now, since a long time ago, like almost right away, they've opened up the doors to anybody. And they've become very competitive, especially for the younger generation. Usually when you're 25 or younger, you're gonna pay more for the cost of insurance. But with Geico, they plan to have more of a lower rate for that type of person. So the risk and collision, and most of these guys do $1,000 deductibles on their quotes, even though they don't say it in this article. If you get a speeding ticket, USAA loses a little bit of their grip here. They do not love that fact. They're at $1,676 a year compared to State Farm, who's now at 1713 so you're only about a $40 difference between the two and State Farm does offer a handful of pieces where USAA isn't competing I'm actually working on a State Farm versus you and not in Alabama so you have to determine what area that these reviews are coming from because there are different levels of service 
Essentially, there's nothing super exciting about them as far as the company. There's no special programs or additional coverage that I've seen that makes them shine over the rest, apart from certain discounts that you get for being a military person or having your car on a military base. You get a discount for that. If you have young drivers, they're going to also give you discount in the details. They're ranked really high over almost every company, but they don't show up in the rankings. And the main reason is the biggest con that USAA has towards their group is that they don't let anybody join. You have to be part of the military. You have to be son or daughter of the military, parent of the military, some sort of family blood related relative that can get you in the door with USAA. I've got some family members with them and they've been happy for the most part to get an additional 15 to 20 percent off just for keeping it on a military base where it's likely more safe than if you didn't keep it there now the caveat to that i forgot to mention is if you're on deployment so that's another piece to it they offer a family discount so if you have children they're trying to like appease that piece of it because there are a lot of younger drivers starting to pop up the length of the membership that you've had with them and then you get an installment discount so if you're Pain in full versus pain monthly, you don't. So founded in 1922, USAA started military only and they've stuck with that. I believe there was like 25 military personnel that were insuring each other's vehicles for risk and that grew into multiple lines of products. We're gonna go over a list of some of the things that USAA does at the end and you're gonna see just how much information or how many products that USAA offers. Mostly people are looking at the auto, so we're going to dive into that the most as far as getting the data for them they've determined is lower across the board, which ultimately gives you a better deal. For those that are 25 or older, not as great, but still great rates. And so they've really come out and said in general, we want to be able to insure just about anyone in any situation, unless you have a ticket or an accident. And then we get a little bit crazy with you. <laughs> In those cases, you're going to click the links below and you're going to shop around and try to find something that's a better fit for your profile as we talk about on this channel. So I'm going to get, but they're lacking in the claims department and they're having some struggles with that right now, along with some of the tech pieces, which we will also cover in this video. More so going to the asterisk, that's the only reason that they're not ranked number one in a lot of the rankings, but the problem is a lot of these rankings are older data. And so when you're looking at the today, you should really look at the reviews that people are more recently leaving and if they're in your area. Because USAA might be amazing in Texas. Again, we said Geico's kind of the overall better fit and the overall open door policy. So they're not going to heavily hit someone with a lower insurance score. And the numbers show it. USAA is about $22, almost $2,300 a year if you have poor credit. Where Geico is about 2000 not quite, about 1970 is the cost for Geico. So there's a pretty big gap. It reverses where, where USA used to be $300 cheaper, but now poor credit, Geico wins. If you get average, which is probably, but you're gonna notice that USAA, where they were uber competitive in the past, it's not so much anymore. When you look at their pricing based on the national average, they're about $1,111 per year compared to other companies like Geico who are $1,221. So about a $100 difference between that major company. But when you're younger, the Geico is going to be the better fit in most cases. State Farm came in at about $1,400-ish. There's a video soon, so don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell icon on for that video. The other ones are Geico came in at $2,490, and then Progressive came in at $3,070. So in these cases, it looks like Progressive is losing in just about every scenario until we get into the drivers with DUIs. State Farm came in the most competitive, USAA came in second, Progressive came in third, and then Geico came in fourth. Same scenario with drivers without insurance. If you don't currently have insurance in three years, five years, whenever you don't have claims, no tickets, no accidents, you're a clean driver, you're gonna get a discount the longer you go. They offer a defensive driving discount, which you can honestly throw that away because if you're not willing to take a course, it doesn't save you much money. Most of the time it's not worth it unless you get a ticket. Because then that helps overcome the not only the points with the state, but also helps you get a little bit of a discount to overcome that big rate increase from the ticket. They do a driver's training discount for those of it. And USAA just knows that that's not the risk they're looking for. You're not the profile fit 
in those scenarios. Now they might be looking for mom, dad with kids and that's fine, but if you're younger, in general, you're gonna lean towards Geico. I'll just quickly rant out the numbers in case you guys are curious. So 16 years old, 22-ish hundred dollars versus 1,900. 18 is 3,300-ish 3, versus 3,700-ish. 3, Age 25 is 15 versus 17. And then we start to flip-flop. Good credit is going to be with USAA, not including the factors of claims and tickets and, and what profile that you have. Age is the next factor that's going to make a big difference. If you're younger age, you're probably going to lean away from the USAA. Uh, even though you have a family and it might be mom, dad, and kids and all of that, uh, Geico is going to lean towards that because anyone under 25 is instantly considered high risk. Just the number of claims as you're learning to drive is going to play a pretty big piece down quite a bit. Lastly, these companies are not always the best fit in a lot of states and they're great companies but there's a lot of different options for different people so as we talk about those i'll put it in the description below if you're interested in getting a quote with multiple companies we work with 17 different companies and i've got another one down there that works with 30 companies so whether you prefer to have an app to do and never talk to somebody or you'd like to talk to somebody live and get advice both of those options are below so diving in, USAA was founded, so age 30 is 1300 versus 1500-ish, I'm rounding these off. And then age 40 is going to be 1225, 1405, notice how they're just like the credit, it, they're flipping now. And then age 60 is 1073 versus 1326. Driving record is no different, we're going to see the same flip-flop happen. Have a good driving history, you're going to be best fit for USAA and as it starts to creep out it's going to go more towards Geico it's going to be about 1700 versus 1500 so you're still seeing that $200 ish gap between them and the DUIs and convictions now Geico freaks out because that's just out of their wheelhouse they're $3,000 versus $2,100 most of this data was taken on if you're doing the standard liability, which in today's age or at the time of this video, the normal is 100,000 per person, 300,000 per accident. Property damage is 50,000. Uninsured motors typically the same, and then you have, and then your 45-year-old is going to pay about 53 a month. Once you get a speeding ticket, if you're 45 year old, you're gonna go about 58, so not a big difference. If you're 45 with a DUI, you're 153. If you're 55, you're 52 a month, and if you're 65 or older, you're 53 a month. So essentially, there's some pretty good rates. They also offer a new program that they started using, which is called their Safe Pilot Insurance Program. And I'm going to link the video up here where I did a full review on them. I'll kind of cheat and tell you some answers here that are younger drivers. They'll have that for people that are in the house. A good student discount if you get an average of a B or better, you're going to get a discount for that as well. New vehicle discount, so you're going to get a little bit newer vehicle, you're going to get a cheaper price. Along with if you have more cars, you're going to have a multi-car discount, which everybody does. Annual mileage discount, so if you drive low miles. Vehicle storage, and this is the unique one, where you can save up to 60% on the vehicle when it's in store. You should watch it either way, but it was lacking. And the biggest complaint was it was just the data wasn't there, the tech piece wasn't there. And so a lot of people were frustrated with the system that they were trying to get a discount on. Some people called it a bait and switch, and it just didn't give them the discount that it should have. That also leads us into the discounts, because that's a very powerful piece. And USAA has some unique ones that I think are really good that if you're in the military, you're going to like this. They have the safe driver discount, so that's normal. Two years, three months for that as well, because they want to keep that the military family together. On top of, they donate to military programs. So for those that are in need, they're also helping back to the community. And if you're like any military personnel, I uh, commend you for being part of that because I don't think I'm good enough or strong enough to join that part. I just don't have the mental strength to do something like that. So you, by far, are on my pedestal. It was 384 versus the cost of 582 for Geico. That's the average annual cost. And that's more of a minimum coverage. If you're looking for full coverage, you're looking about 1200, just over 1200. 
versus just over $1,500. So there's about a $300 gap between the two as far as the scenarios that they used in this case. The biggest thing that plays a factor is going to be your insurance score or credit score. When you're looking at the insurance score, USAA values that a little bit more than GEICO because what's it coverage with the $500 deductible. So these numbers, if you're doing PLPD, just liability only, you're going to pay a little bit less of a cost. Keep in mind, it's not exact because each state's different and it's not necessarily always even offered with some companies. GEICO does restrict some of the people allowing them to do quotes. Like in my state, in Michigan, it's almost impossible to get insurance with them. They make it difficult on purpose. Overall, what is the one to go with? Personal opinion, if you are a fit for either, if it's about a hunting them, don't put them in the number one slot where they really deserve to be, mainly because the way that they handle claims far exceed most companies. Where Geico is really good and they're above average with claims, they're just not quite at that level where the USAA is going to sit. And that's personally where I would like to be. I want to make sure if I have a claim, if something happens, they're going to pay it. Sometimes if there's a little bit extra, they're willing to outpocket a few expenses just to make sure that you're satisfied. And, at the, and we had Progressive coming in a little bit higher at $1,800. Once again, depending on the state that you're in, Progressive is massively growing and they're tech trended and they're customer focused. They're three steps ahead of where you're thinking you want to be in the future and they're preparing for that. USAA is playing catch up on the tech trends. So they're going to find a rough spot in a few years where they're not going to be able to keep up unless they make a question. Agents about this is always a different story. So they don't really know or aren't trained to, to explain your insurance rate went up because your insurance score changed or the vehicle changed or we had a rate increase. That's something that all agents should know that they can explain. It's not always the best answer. You don't always love it. I don't always love to say it, but it's the truth. And at least you know and you can make the best decision for you. This was a really good one. Uh, another complaint, April 26 of 2021. Either way, but I think USAA may not necessarily be a fit for a handful of people that are joining them. Now, the article that I started reading was on Forbes, and I leaned over to Wallet Hub for a few other pieces, as well as the advisor and a couple different websites to get some comparisons and some feedback so we could at least show you guys just some different opinions versus just the one company that ran one specific scenario. And in this article, they actually gave a really favorable ranking. Uh, reviews on Wallet Hub gave them 3.0 out of 5. NAIC gave them a decent rating. Better Business Bureau gave them a B plus, which is not good. That tells you that there's complaints, uh, which is common. Better Business Bureau is a normal spot for people. And then the AM Best, which is more the stability of the company, gave them an A plus plus, which is like the top. So they're stable. They've got money. It's a matter of not whether they have money. It's whether they're willing to pay the claims with the money. So an older one that popped up first. I'm gonna read you a couple of reviews here that some people have said, and these are the first things that popped up. I went into Wallet Hub because I wanted to see why they were ranking them so much lower. On average, they're like a four star, three and a half to four star, which is pretty good out of five. And Wallet Hub was teetering just below that three mark, and they had 2,880 reviews. So I jumped in there just to see, and they kind of give some some ba background. JD Power gave them a four and a half out of five, so they loved them. 